Hi, I'm Stephen Kaplan, and I've created a series of videos that debunk long-held myths about oboe playing. Today, I'd like to talk about articulation. Many oboe players and other wind players talk about playing with a light tongue. Students who have trouble developing speed of articulation, as well as students who tend to start every sound in an unrefined, non-musical manner, are often helped by this concept of lightness in the tongue stroke. But in my personal quest to find a method for achieving variety in articulation, I have found that only thinking about lightening up is simply inadequate. In fact, when someone speaks about the tongue movement in terms of light and heavy, they are only reinforcing a false idea that the weight of the tongue is what causes changes in the sound. The differences between a beautiful and refined start to a tone as opposed to an ugly, blatty start, or a quick, lively staccato as opposed to one which is sluggish and dead sounding, have nothing to do with the weight of the tongue muscle. The weight of the tongue is constant. No amount of mind games or articulation studies is going to change the amount the tongue weighs. Oboe players benefit when they get beyond the myth of lightness and heaviness and begin to understand in greater detail exactly how the movements of the tongue relate to sound production. But first, let's explore why the myth of lightness seems to work for some players. One possibility is that the player having problems with tonguing is involving the whole tongue muscle unnecessarily. The tongue is a unique muscle in the body. It appears to be just one large muscle, but in reality, it is a composite muscle. It's made up of several smaller muscles, intrinsic ones and extrinsic. Most with large multisyllabic names such as genioglossus. Now that's a mouthful. In other parts of the body, muscles are separated by connective tissue. The many muscles of the tongue are not separated by connective tissue. And this allows for the complex movements involved in chewing, swallowing, saying words like genioglossus, and of course, playing the oboe. Because of this unique structure, we are able to move only the front section of the tongue or only the back of the tongue, independent of the front, and so on. We can also move the whole tongue all at once but we don't have to. Many oboe players have tonguing issues because they have conceived that the tongue is one big muscle and they attempt to articulate using the whole tongue. They also expect to feel the whole tongue working all the time. Single tonguing is best accomplished using only the tip of the tongue. Double tonguing uses the tip of the tongue in alternation with the back of the tongue. But oboe players who imagine the tongue as one big muscle will move the tongue in the same way for all styles of articulation. So when this player is told to lighten up, she begins tonguing using just the front of the tongue, independently from the rest of the tongue. The tongue then seems to feel lighter and the sound improves. People who try to use the whole tongue for articulation are going to feel the tongue is heavy against the reed. The sound of their articulation will seem stiff and speed will be compromised. Imagine my hand represents the blade of the tongue and my finger is an oboe reed. Some people attack the reed with a whole tongue instead of using only the tip of the tongue to move away from the reed. But sometimes a student who has trouble with tonguing is using the tip of the tongue independently from the rest of the tongue, but they are moving the tongue too far away from the reed. So when this student is told to lighten up, he begins keeping the tongue closer to the reed. Then the distance traversed by the tongue is shorter, making the tongue movement quicker. Again, the tongue seems to be less heavy. But here lies the problem with asking any student to lighten up. These are two very different problems with two different solutions. Isn't it more effective to give a student a specific goal, such as use the front of the tongue, or notice the distance your tongue moves away from the reed, rather than just saying lighten up and hoping the student figures it out on their own? Although we cannot change the weight of the tongue, there are things about the tongue that we can change, 
And these changes can make a tremendous difference in how the articulation sounds. We can change the speed at which the tongue withdraws from the reed, as well as the speed at which it returns. We can also change the position of the tongue in the mouth, as well as its placement against the reed. These oboe motions are key to improving articulation. Monitoring the quality of the tongue's movement is the most effective way to solve articulation problems. Musicians move in order to make music. So when we are precise about the language we use to describe movement, then we will more precisely be able to attain the musical result. In order to achieve the precise articulation the music requires, there are three things we can do. First, we can vary the speed of the tongue's movement. Second, we can change the position of the tongue. And third, we can control the air expulsion created by the tongue's position and movement. I invite you to read more about these three ways of better understanding articulation by reading the chapter on the tongue in my Oboe Motions book. Thank you.